Howdy, and thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. Today, I want to bring you along as I review the MRI of the brain impacted by multiple sclerosis. For starters, we've pulled up a new scan that was just completed a few days ago. The first thing we're going to do is split the screen in half so we can pull up an old scan. So we have the new scan on the left and the old scan on the right. And then I'm going to set up both scans so that we're at the base of the brain. Now, just to get you oriented, Imagine that you're laying down flat, you're laying on your hair down here, you're looking up at the ceiling. So these are actually your teeth that you see here. Here's an ear and another ear. As we scroll through, you're going to see your nose and your eyes show up here. Again, we have the new scan that we're going to be comparing to the old scan. In this comparison, we're using what's called a flare-weighted image. And so MS lesions are going to show up as bright spots. So we'll begin to slowly move up, and you see the picture on the left is moving. Now here the nose is coming into view, and there's an ear over here and an ear over there. My eyes are really back here at the cerebellum and the brain stem. And so periodically we're going to pause and come over to the old scan from last year and do the same thing and scroll up. Now. The first point of comparison is right here. If you look on the left, the new scan, we see these two subtle bright spots. And if you look back a year, they weren't so subtle. In fact, last year, these were new T2 bright lesions. They were new lesions in the cerebellum. And what we see is a year later, they're still present, but they're less conspicuous. They've gotten a bit smaller, and this can happen. Now, as we continue to march up, now we see, uh, again, a subtle uh, bright spot on the other side. And this is in the middle cerebellar peduncle, which connects this structure, the pons, to the cerebellum. It's like a connection. And there's a lesion right there. So we come over and look at the old scan, and sure enough, it was there last year as well. Now, in both of these assessments that we've just done, this is reassuring. We're not seeing any new lesions, and we're not seeing any lesions that have gotten bigger. So we'll keep moving up. Here are the nose, and now we're starting to see the eyes are in view. And here we see this bright area in the pawns. And so we get caught up in the old scan. Yep, and sure enough, it was there last year. Moving up on the left-hand side on the new scan, the eyes are in view. You can see the optic nerve on the right, and you can see the optic nerve on the left, which I think is really cool. There's the nose. And my eyes are drawn to these lesions, these bright spots that we see on the right here. And we notice that the bright spots are next to that black structure. The black structure is ventricle. These spots are called periventricular, which is one of the classic locations to see an MS. Now the question on the table is, were these bright spots seen last year or are they new? So here we look at the old scan, and sure enough, they were there last year. These lesions are not new and they're not larger. It's an old lesion and therefore we're not concerned about it in this comparison. Here's another periventricular lesion that we see on the new scan. And when we get caught up on the right-hand side on the old scan, it was definitely there last year. It is not any bigger, and that's very reassuring. Here we see another periventricular lesion above the last one that we just looked at. And it was seen there before. Those do look the same. They're not concerning for new disease activity. Here's a periventricular lesion on the other side. And it was there last year. We see a couple small four lesions there. One, two, three, four. They are the same. We're almost to the top of the brain. We see 
a juxtacortical lesion in the frontal lobe there. And so when we get the old skin caught up, uh, it was there last year. So it's not new and it's not enlarged. Fantastic news. So thus far in our comparison, we know that there are no new or no enlarged T2 bright lesions, and that's very reassuring. Now what I'm going to do is simplify the screen and get rid of the old study. Now we're only looking at the new study, and I'm going to change the picture so that we're looking at it after we gave the contrast dye. And so the contrast dye is an injection in the arm, and it lights up the blood vessels of the brain, and so we can see the blood vessels. Here's a good example. Um, you see this squiggle right down here, and then there's another squiggle there. Those squiggles are blood vessels, and they have dye in them, so you can see them. And what we do when we get a post-contrasted scan is we look to see if any of the dye leaks out into the tissue. If it did, that means that there's a new lesion, new at the time we're talking, because they only stay enhancing for about two weeks, maybe four at the farthest reach. So I'm looking at the brain tissue here, ignoring the blood vessels, looking at the actual tissue of the brain. And I do not see any enhancing lesions, which is fantastic. So now I can say, not only are there no new or enlarged T2 lesions, but additionally, I can say that there's no enhancing lesions. And that's a great thing to be able to say. One last assessment that I would like to do on this MRI of the brain and that's to look at the brain volume, the size of the brain. And what we see is, compared to folks their age, they have a very large brain. It's the 88th percentile. So if you had 100 women this person's age and lined them all up in a row, most of them have a brain that's smaller than her. Now what really matters actually isn't the size at any given one point, as much as the rate that it shrinks. All humans after the age of 18 have programmed brain shrinkage. Just like our skin gets thinner as we age or we get shorter as we age, our brains are supposed to get a little bit smaller, but a little bit. And what you see here, this slope, the way it comes down, that's the rate of brain volume loss of a normal healthy control. So as we get a, another data point and another data point and another data point over the years, we would like to see that that rate is normal. Now, this on the right is measuring the thalamus. The thalamus is that green structure in the center of the brain. And thalamic volume, so the size of the thalamus, is probably the very single best correlate to long-term disability. So big thalamus, better predicted outcome, small thalamus, worse predicted outcome. And compared to a bunch of women her age, her thalamus is above average. And again, I find this to be very reassuring. I've had a blast on our recent live streams and shout out to all the folks from around the globe that participate in this global online village. Until my next video or live stream, or the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.